a serious problem every society has not been exempt from having is the issue of drugs. Certainly the Muslim society has been aware of this issue, has seen it, but unfortunately for the most part has brushed it under the carpets. Our youth, being the hope and beacon of our future, are the most precious thing to us. Unfortunately, due to a plethora of reasons, one of them being cultural, it is an area that is not discussed. Many families fear the backlash. It's a matter of honor and dignity that will feel jeopardized when finding it necessary to approach an expert regarding either your son or sibling or whatever relative you have, but fear that now someone else knows that I probably failed in the upbringing of my family or in the upbringing of my child or even in the guiding of one of my friends. There's this level of shame, but at the end of the day, if you truly love someone, then you would bring to their attention the solutions, irrespective of whatever backlash is there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold us accountable for every small and major thing we did and for the opportunities that we deliberately decided not to take. Fear of backlash should not be an excuse. There's a stigma that has been placed over the heads of those who have fallen victim for drug abuse, alcohol abuse, and the likes. Is that they are seen as failures in society. Not knowing what they've gone through, what they've been through. And unfortunately, we see this many times with regards to the homeless. When we see a homeless person, you'd be hard pressed to find someone who doesn't go through and pass by them except that they think, what a loser, what a failure in life. They might be holding that sign that says, I need help. But people might feel hesitant to help them because they fear that, you know, what if they use my money to go and buy something wrong? More alcohol, more drugs. And calling them names internally, not even to their face. That's a major issue because you don't know what they went through. You don't know the abuse that they've gone through. Yes, they probably made the wrong decision in getting into taking drugs, but it's not your place to judge. It's your place to help. It's your place to learn more, and it's your place to help facilitate a society, an environment that can help people leave such behaviors. Because if it's not going to be them, it's probably going to be someone in your life. And if it's not going to be someone in your life, it might even be you. You don't know what life will throw in your direction. And many people on accident fall into this sort of trap. They might feel the need to take antidepressants. They might feel that they've developed a to an intolerance to that, or rather a tolerance to that. Then they need to strengthen whatever it is they are taking. Sooner or later, they are now victims of abuse that they didn't voluntarily or intentionally walk to. And all of a sudden, you might have a few arrogant and ignorant individuals who will put their names down and say, what a failure in life. We are better than that. What we should be doing is concerning ourselves that drugs in Islam obviously are haram unless necessary. When they are necessary, then we take them only when they're necessary. Many youth unfortunately make the mistake in trying experiments, whether it's a friend at school who says, I have a, something, maybe you want to try it, it helps you relieve sort of that pain. Or whether it's taking that smoke that you're not supposed to be taking. They make these mistakes. Okay, are we going to let cultural backlash, that shame, of a society knowing that in my house there was someone who's doing this stop us from helping them? Absolutely not. Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, has a wonderful saying in this regard. Stating al-adat qahirat. Very short but very powerful. That behaving and engaging in repetitive behavior is extremely deplorable. What does this mean? Whenever we feel addicted Whenever we see ourselves going back and forth doing the same thing and not making any progress and especially hurting and harming ourselves, that is highly considered reprehensible and deplorable. To do anything that will get you addicted 
is completely deplorable according to the words of wisdom by Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam. If we see that whatever behavior we are getting in will lead us to be addicted, whether it's something we are consuming because we have the slightest headache or we feel the slightest pain, whether they are in our limbs or in our back, the slightest pain ever, maybe it's worth considering that there's no need to rush to whatever over-the-counter drug that is available by arm's reach. Because one thing might lead to another. But if it does get to a point where you find yourself struggling, or you find someone you know and love struggling, the last thing we should be doing is saying that these people are failures in life. Many people innocently walk into these issues. And if they do so, then there's an innocent way to get out of this issue. You don't force them. You don't force them to be behind bars because if they leave my confines or the confines of our home, then they're going to bring us great shame. Many times the exposure is the best thing that is possible for them. There was a society, the Alcohol Anonymous Society. Anyone who's an addict, who's struggling, an alcoholic trying to recover, they bring them in this group in a round setting where people are seated facing one another such that no one is at the helm of whatever discussion this is such that we know we are all in this together we are trying to help you and you see others struggling with you knowing that you're not alone knowing that you are not secluded and excommunicated from society Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always loves you wants the best from you but there are those who unfortunately don't know this and don't understand that Sometimes we might feel even despair. If you see yourself struggling, don't have despair. I've sinned so much now. God in the Quran simply calls alcohol rijsun min amal shaytan. I am doing way beyond alcohol, whatever drug that I am taking. At this point, God is just not going to concern himself with me. The contrary, God is concerning himself with you even more now. You are an example of hope. We've heard of many wonderful stories of struggling alcoholics or addicts and they've unleashed their true self from that restraint, from that pitfall in their life and how inspirational are these examples. Now you have the potential to be an example, to be a role model for those who are struggling. The contrary, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting more emphasis on you, loves you in addition because knowing what you're going through and that you still hold true to your values and your principles, Allah will reward you. And this is a form of jihad in nafs, an inner struggle that you see the world going against you. You see even your body working not in your favor, yet you still maintain your morals and your values. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will compensate you double for your struggle. As we all understand, the inner struggle is much more significant than the outer struggle there is. But it starts on a communal level. How do we address these issues? We address them by making sure that there are facilities that can help look after the issues that are related to this. Facilities such as what? Areas like the masjid. The masjid is not just a spiritual rehabilitation center. It should also be an area where if someone is struggling outside of areas of spirituality, that they have a friend they can go to. Not necessarily a department, although how beautiful would that be if in our local centers there is a department that deals with the youth issues outside of areas of religiosity, with addiction, with school, with bullying. These are common issues. The Muslim community is not a community that's a robot, that are ma'sumin, that they will never be susceptible to these problems. They indeed will be. And sometimes they are the most likely candidates to fall into these issues. Why so? We have expectations upon us to be good role models in society. And sometimes our expectations will overwhelm us. And that might lead us to falling and falling into these issues quicker than the average individual. That sister that has to wear the hijab will feel a little bit more pressure than the sister that doesn't have to wear the hijab. That pressure might build up and eventually a person might collapse spiritually. Or that brother struggling in a society of desires. So we are more than likely to being susceptible to these problems. Do not let culture, do not let societal backlash hold you back or someone that you know and love from approaching experts, whether Muslim or non-Muslim from having just an ear to talk to. No one is saying rush straight to the first psychologist or psychiatrist or expert and start paying them for you know, therapy sessions and whatnot, but do what? Have an ear, someone to listen 
to listen to your concerns and issues. That is useful. We are social human beings. They say one of the reasons why we are called insan because netness, we have uh, happiness and pleasure when we are sitting with someone, another fellow human being. We are social creations of Allah. The jalis is also the anis in one famous saying as well. Someone who sits by you and accompanies you is also someone who brings you great happiness in your life. Do not feel like you are excommunicated, that you are ostracized because of a certain behavior and never have despair from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for indeed Allah loves you and inshallah ta'ala you have a community who is more than willing to be at your support and stand behind you through whatever endeavor you are going through.